Welcome to New Day Cleveland. I'm Natalie Herbeck. And I'm David Moss. And today we're bringing you a holiday feast. We sure are because we have everything from appetizers to side dishes, main courses, and desserts. Plus a few recipes of our own. New Day Cleveland starts right now. <laughs> Well, Emily is joining us right now from Country Road Sourdough. I got that right, right? Yeah, you got it. She was on the show now saying this would be a great thing for a holiday feast kind of deal to learn how to make sourdough bread. I don't know how, so we got the class gathered here. Where do we begin? All right, so we're going to start with our water. So I'm going to add my water in about 350. Sometimes I'm a little off. It's okay. So we're going we're grams, off. right? Yep, we're going grams. So now we're adding starter. So let's talk about starter before we add it. It's just flour and water. And over time, as it sits out, it will rise and fall and it acts as your yeast. Usually it needs anywhere from 4 hours to 12 hours to double in size. We're going to go ahead and add 150 grams in here. Okay, and you can see like the structure of it is really strong right now. See how it's floating at the top? Mm -hmm. That's what we want. So if it just sunk immediately, that means that there's not enough gases in it to it keep happening. it rising. Yep. Okay. I do a little bit of bread flour. Can we zero it up again? Yeah. Okay. The biggest thing I want you to take away from so this. So what kind of flour do we use there? That's bread flour. Okay. And then all purpose. So this and is like what you see in the grocery store. Okay. Yeah. Uh, unbleached. unbleached. Now we're going to go ahead and just mix it up. So I like to mix it up with my dough whisk here. With time, it'll become shaggy. And you just mix it. Yeah. Okay. We're just Some trying technique. to get most of the flour incorporated. That's great. So it's turned shaggy. Yep. So that's about all we want to mix it. You did a great job mixing it there. <laughs> <laughs> It yeah, is a party. So we'll just get More the wine. flour on the side and yeah, we're good. What we do next in the process is called stretch and folds. So with stretch and folds, all you're doing is you're pulling away from the side and you're lifting up, kind of shimming, and then bringing it on top of each other. And that is called a stretch and fold. Yeah, here we go. Sure. Stretch and fold. Yep, so you're just going to lift up so you really want to get all the way underneath it and then shimmy it and stretch it over. Yep. Yep, so you can shimmy up. And I didn't shimmy perfect. either. No shimmy. That's okay. Here, we'll do one more. Yeah. <laughs> Shake that. Shimmy, your, shimmy. Are we failing? My kid's got a good shimmy. Did you see that? <laughs> that was a great shimmy. <laughs> That's perfect. So after we do all of our stretch and folds, then we go ahead and shape it. You can feel the dough if you want. Like it's oh, yeah. much softer. Yeah. It's not very sticky. That's why I've never learned how to do this because I never had anyone show me what it's supposed to feel like. Yeah, yeah, and it really does help to see it. So we folded it over and then I'm pulling up to the side. I'm creating tension because you want to have tension that's going to help with your oven spring so rising once it's in the oven. And then I'm going to take this side and I'm going to pull up and over. And now I'm going to turn it on itself. I like to do a little bit with underneath. That way it really gets that surface so tension on top. So like you kind of put your fingers underneath like this. So you're tucking it. So that way it's pulling nice go. and taut. And then we're going to put it so when we flip it over, the top was on bottom. Right. Okay, so now I'm just kind of pulling the seams together. This just helps again to create. It sort of keeps the gases in, huh? Yeah. A little bit right. And then when it comes out of the fridge, it looks like this. Okay. So I'm going to just pull it away from the sides, make sure it's not sticking at all before I pop it over. And we're just going to put it like this. You give it the business. Okay. So I'm just going to do a quick movement across. So we're just going to do one, just like so. Okay. Okay. And then if you want to add additional designs, you can use less pressure and just do it lightly. So we'll just add some little lines here. This is exciting. Okay. So then I would immediately just pop this into the Dutch oven. Ooh, ah. Ooh. Ooh, look at that baby, huh? Okay, so we can set that here for a minute. Okay. That looks awesome. Yeah. So we'll take off the parchment. Oh, 
And look at this, she's got a beautiful little prize for us here while that one cools off. Or can you cut that one now? Yeah, we're gonna cut it right now. Just because so nothing's better than warm bread. Okay, that's great. So everyone's gonna take a piece of bread and put a little butter on it. Why don't you guys do that? Okay. Give it a shot. Okay. Wow. It's so good here, I got an extra knife. Come on, let's go everybody. Okay, so when everybody gets a sourdough starter, at the end of the night too, right? Yeah, everyone leaves a sourdough starter instructions afterwards. Okay. Country road sourdough. Country road sourdough. Can I give you one? Oh, thank you. You got it. I'm gonna, so get this good. One. I'm gonna get this one. Very in the good. Middle. Emily, you're great. So good. Kids are great. Thanks have, for having me. It's so much fun. Hey, so you come on the show, we'll talk no, about starters sometime, huh? Okay. Okay. That sounds great. They toast with glasses, right? Yeah. We'll do bread. To Emily, how about that? Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy holidays. Yes, happy holidays. <laughs> I can't tell you guys how excited I am to be cooking as part of this holiday show for you. Technically, I'm not cooking. I wanted to make something simple and easy. Fun appetizer to make. I'm calling it the Herbic Holiday Wreath. This is something that I have been making for 20 years plus with my family. It's become a tradition. No, it's not. It is something I found online that I thought was super cute. But listen, I am known for making really good appetizers always for the holidays. So. It's very simple to make, and we're going to start with a few simple ingredients. You got your hummus, we're gonna use feta cheese, we're going to use some scallions, parsley, tomatoes, and we're topping something off here with a pepper. I'll show you that in a moment. It's basically a festive wreath. We got the holiday colors going. We're gonna start with your hummus. We're gonna mix hummus into a bowl here with the feta cheese and the scallions. I used a really simple tray that I found at the dollar store. Um, it's probably like 12 inches across, maybe, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, and we're just gonna coat the bottom of it like a wreath. This is where I'm going to add feta. Now I need two rounds of feta. This round of feta is gonna go in with the hummus to mix in. I like a lot of cheese. We're gonna add a little bit more. When I was looking for things too, I also found in the grocery store, there's a lot of dairy-free options that you can use. So you don't have to use the feta cheese to put in. All right, so I'm gonna cut the scallions now. I'm probably not cutting these small enough. We're gonna dice, we're gonna put some of those in. And trust me, a little bit goes a long way with these. My eyes are already starting to water here. And we're putting it in. Oh, that's, <clears throat> that'll get you. Here's where the fun comes into play. I am going to try and attempt to do this exactly right. So we're gonna start spreading the hummus around the tray. We're gonna make sure it doesn't get on the table like that. But you know what? Here's what I always think about when I think of the holidays. I think of family, I think of fun, I think of when I was a kid making a mess in the kitchen and it really not being a big deal. So you wanna spread it thinner, right? You don't want it to be too thick. I promise this is gonna look really good when it's done. All the chefs out there watching right now, don't judge the way I'm cutting this because I know I'm not doing it right. So we'll start by putting the parsley, sprinkle it on the wreath. Honestly, it's very simple. Minimal ingredients, that's what I love about things like this because I feel like when people are doing holiday meals, there's so much going on, they're making all those big plates, and the last th thing you want is to make complicated appetizers. Now we're gonna bring in the tomatoes. I saw it where they were whole, but I just think cutting it in half will just make it, it who wants to bite into a whole cherry tomato when they're, well, some people might. You know me, the fact that I'm putting cherry tomatoes on something and then eating it, it's a big deal. All right, let's start putting some of these on. We'll push them in. So there are little bulbs. Just add a couple more here. I mean, that looks adorable, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, so I can add a little bit of feta, just sprinkle on top to totally give it the holiday feel. It's the snow on the wreath, right? We'll go with it. I am at Stir Studio Kitchen here in Ohio City, and Charlie is the best. Here's what happened. I tried to use a bow cutout with a pepper, didn't come in time, so I thought, I know just the person who can make this happen. So Charlie, can I have you step in and help me? I'm bringing a professional yes, in to the kitchen, folks, who was watching me this entire time and probably cringing. So we need to make a bow to wrap up the wreath. Great, okay, so, like Natalie said, you should probably use a cookie cutter, but <laughs> the second best thing is a fake chef named Charlie. Okay. So I can come to your house, <laughs> I charge by the hour, and I can help make you a bow. And I, this would have taken me. Do it. I don't even. It wouldn't have. It wouldn't have turned out. A little. So let's put the bow on this end. Oh. 
Bow where? Uh, we'll put on the end here. I'll move, I'll move on to my tomatoes. So the wreath, how cute is this? Isn't it cute? I mean, you did a great job with the part. Isn't it cute? Us. Okay, <laughs> so here's what we do, folks. We remove the cup. I got some crackers, put it in the center, and your holiday wreath is complete. I'm really proud of it. <laughs> Yay! When we come back, a unique twist on your typical turkey. Welcome back to our New Day Cleveland Holiday Feast. I caught up with Hank from Mr. Brisket to learn about deconstructed turkey. One of the things that I noticed over the years when you're selling turkeys to people at Thanksgiving is, you know, turkey can be a little tricky to cook. You have a whole bird, and when you have a whole bird, they dry out the white meat, the dark meat doesn't get done enough, you get a raw spot off and right in here. So I started saying to my customers, how about I cut it up for you? Okay. And I call this a turkey deconstruction. The advantages to cutting it up are it's much easier to cook. The only disadvantage that you can come up with is you don't have the cavity anymore to stuff and you don't get the presentation, but as I'm gonna show in a few minutes, it, it works out pretty well and it makes things a lot easier. Because we're gonna just take this turkey apart. We're taking off the uh, leg right now. So I'm gonna separate the thigh and the drumstick. Now we're gonna take off the wing. There's not a ton of meat on the turkey wings, but there's enough, it's a good nibble. Now roasting the breast can be tricky and carving the breast is by far the hardest part when you're cooking a turkey. So what I'm gonna do is bone out the breast. What I'd recommend to do before you put it in the oven, pat everything dry, season it any way you want, and at that point, put it in the oven, and this is what you get. And now you have the wings, you have the drumsticks, you have the thighs, you have the breast, the best part about the breast is it's boneless. Thanks, Hank. You know, Mr. Brisket has been serving Northeast Ohio since 1974. Take a look at all they have to offer. Mr. Brisket is a boutique butcher shop. We specialize in USDA prime and Wagyu beef, and we, we sell premium quality cuts. We also do prepared food, some deli sandwiches and some light catering. People call us looking for beef tenderloin fillets and rib steak and strip steak, very popular cuts. So we sell a lot of those and carry a lot of that, but we also have things like hanger steak and outside skirt steak, lasso, buco, um, a lot of short rib these days. That's you. All right, thanks. Good to see you. The thing that was unique about Mr. Brisket was no one in Cleveland was selling quality meat products. I mean, no one. There were no supermarkets doing it. There were, there were no other butcher shops doing it. We were, without question, the first people in Northeast Ohio to sell premium quality meat products, and that's something we still do, and it's something we take pride in. We make fabulous brisket. This is USDA prime brisket, and this is made with our famous recipe, which my stepdad invented, with uh, cola and chili sauce and onion soup mix. It's a very sweet au jus, and it tastes good. Aaron, who's my meat smoking specialist, has a really terrific smoker off-site, and he does for us um, some brisket burn ends and some pulled pork. You've got a duke, which is like a signature sandwich that's corned beef, brisket, pastrami, and turkey. It's one pound sandwich. I think it's the biggest deli sandwich in Cleveland. Um, we have a Reuben, which is a grilled corned beef sandwich, and then we have a barbecue brisket sandwich. We're an iconic Cleveland business. And, um, you know, that's, that's something that's thrown around a lot, but I think in our case, you know, we can claim that we are a bit of, of history here in Northeast Ohio. There's always people that have never heard of us. We're always trying to get the word out a little better. We're fortunate to have the, uh, a great reputation in Cleveland, Ohio for, for, for being known for premium quality. But I think a pan of Mr. Brisket Brisket is just a fabulous Cleveland tradition that, that more people should take advantage of. Well, we all know that every holiday feast has to have a good side dish, or two, or three, or however many is needed, right? So we knew who to call to make some of the best side dishes around. Anthony Scalero from 111 Bistro here in Medina. 
You brought me into the Welcome. kitchen today. Thank you. Put you to work. I need I, a sous chef. I, I'll be your sous chef. Perfect. I don't know how. I normally get kicked out of the kitchen, so we'll see how I well, do. This but... is my job. I just tell you what to do, and you gotta do it. So <laughs> All right. I like the sound of this. Yeah. So, what side dish are we gonna start with? We're gonna start with some roasted root vegetables. Okay. Okay. So, this is one of those things like for the holidays that I tend to like because there's a lot of different variety. Mm -hmm. A lot of people maybe don't use them as much, so it's something that's kind of different. different. You know. So. We have some parsnips here. I'm so this you, is where I'm going to get to it. Yeah, okay. We're gonna Am I peeling them just first? Just peel those up. Okay. Yep. Looks like a carrot. I can do. I can handle yeah. this. The whole goal with um, the root vegetables is we want these to kind of all be uh, uniform in size, so that when okay. they cook, um, we're all cooking it at the same yeah. time at the same. Yes, rate. because when you have the big pieces, then you they're got, not cooked as well right. as the smaller ones. You don't want chunks and little ones. No. And so we want it all to kind of be uniform. The vegetables that we use, that I use all together, is we got some Wait, parsnips. Wait, look how pretty this looks. Look right? at that. That's gorgeous. <laughs> Sorry, I just had a reference. Yeah, okay. I don't, you know, I don't decorate very often, <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, we use some butternut squash. Um, so some of the herbs that we use to like season everything. Um, rosemary and sage, both like really hearty, uh, nice kind of winter fall herbs. Mm -hmm. um, go really, really well with the root vegetables. Um, we also use beets. We had celery root, parsnips, and then um, the squash. So that's that's one side that we're working with. Okay. Um, another one is Brussels sprouts. Mm. I love Brussels sprouts. And there's so many ways. We're gonna do it a couple different ways. So we're gonna do the same kind of concept where we're gonna take whole Brussels sprouts and we quartered them up and roast them that way. So one, it's not gonna take as much time. And then two, it's gonna give us that caramelization, that color. Mm -hmm. Some of the leaves will crisp up, so there'll be some texture. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ways that I like to do is I like to take them and, and basically like shave these down. Okay? okay. So it ends up being kind of like if you can think of like a shredded cabbage, it's basically what it it's is. What it is. Okay. So you can kind of see a nice Look color those. on those. Okay. These same kind of thing. Just toss them. Real simple. Salt. There's a little bit of garlic on there. Some oil. So you can do two things. We can. That's keep, how I make mine. Just like that, yeah. and then they're done. Normally, we can keep these separate. We could throw them in with our root vegetables. We can take bacon onion jam and slap it all over. I, I say, mean, I think throw we should, them in. We should just was throw that what you were going here. to say? I was going to. Okay, good because I would feel bad if you had another plan for them. Nope. All right. So this looks so good. Now we're just gonna kind of toss this up. Oh, I'm making a mess. That's all right. We're supposed to though, right? It's a kitchen. Yeah. And then we can just. Okay, these look spectacular. Oh, boy. Oh, rogue You're going to have to eat that. Yep. Rogue one. Don't worry, I know how to get Hold the hot. We did just take them out mm -hmm. of the oven. Yep. yep. <laughs> totally ignored that part. I do it all the time, mm. don't worry. Mm. So those are, that's one side that we can okay. roll with. So now these are cooking up pretty good. Um, why don't you go ahead and uh, you throw a little bit throw of Throw some of this in there? Jam in there, yep. I think that looks about right. Wow, does that look good. <laughs> so you can see the difference, right? So this is gonna be more like that fresh, uh, you know, won't have that roasted kind of flavor and texture mm -hmm. versus having a lot, you know, some roasted colors over here. So, and I mean, it's been on for only a few minutes. And, and it's basically we're gonna be, done. We're gonna be pretty much done here in a second. We got two different ways that you can make Regular Brussels, or bring that yeah, down bring again. Down. Add Brussels with your root vegetables. Right. They're colorful. They add it. Thank you. You're you know welcome. I was going to do that. Now, I did see that just come off the stove. Right. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to do it anyway because. That won't, yeah. You'll be able we'll to be get good, that right? one down. Yeah. Uh oh. Burns the hand, not the mouth. <laughs> oh. There you go. That is so good. Perfect. That jam, that bacon jam is delicious. It is. It, it's such a versatile thing, and it's like one of those, you can use it to enhance sides or just have it on its own, you know? So but too yeah. easy. And the, you made them easy. You know, you we gotta, gotta make do a little easy. chopping, but you made them easy. A little knife work ahead of time. You could you could chop those vegetables a day or two ahead and be ready to go. Thank you, you know? for having yeah. us in your kitchen. Absolutely. And finding Thanks out a little bit about what you do for the holidays. Yeah. I think it's always fun to hear what our awesome chefs can put together. You know, I get I roped into cooking, so. <laughs> we love when we rope you into yeah, cooking. Hey. And you're going to get roped in for every holiday, every too. Every holiday, yeah. It's we'll all be good over. Though. Thank good. you so much. Thank Again, you. we're in Medina, 111B Show. Come here. Hey, if you uh, are doing holiday planning for a day that's not on the actual holiday, come here and eat yeah. while you're at it. 
Still to come on New Day Cleveland, raising a glass to our holiday feast with festive wines. here at Missoula's again. Thanks for joining All us. All the beautiful food you bring to the set is unbelievable. I'm glad you enjoy it. Enjoy it, we love it. So anyhow, we're talking about getting ready for the holidays now, and everyone likes tenderloin. And Chris, you're cleaning this baby up. So he's got a tenderloin here that when you buy a tenderloin, there's a lot of stuff there you really can't use for the holiday table if you want to present it the way you want to present it. So what's your plan? Take off the chime, and then what Chris is going to do is remove like this silver membrane that's across the bottom. To make sure it's tender, like butter yeah. tender, so right? so we're going to get to the heart of the tenderloin. That's our main goal. He's going to take the silver off because mm -hmm. you don't want the silver because that could be a little chewy on the fork, right? It very right. chewy. Okay, how long will it take you to do this job, Chris? Less than five minutes per tenderloin. Okay, so he's going to get this down. He's going to get it down to the perfect center. And then what are we going to do with it, Brooke? So we're going to cut each end off so we have a perfect shaped log from beginning to end. And then what Chris will demonstrate is we're going to actually build a tunnel so that we can stuff it. Well, all these extra pieces, like some of this Chris can grind and it makes the best hamburger you've ever had. Other pieces oh, yeah. like the tail and the flap on the side, you can cube that up for stroganoff, stir fry. You could even put it in your chili. And, and we're gonna, what are we going to stuff it with? We have a couple different recipes we like to share. I have one that we're going to do with lobster, sun-dried tomatoes, fresh spinach. Another one, you could use scampies if you want. I've got shrimp, sun-dried tomatoes, spinach. You could even blend a little bit of fresh herbs in there. That sounds beautiful. Now, if you folks want to try this at home, I'd be very careful because Chris is a, is a master at this. And when he had the knife in there, the knife was up near your hand. You have to be careful. Huh? Yeah, it was just underneath the surface, probably about a quarter to a third of an inch below it. You gotta be really gentle, because this is really You don't want to tear it. Yeah, so you can see. I'm there you go. Tongue. Now it's time for Brooke to go to work. That's right. Let's do it. Okay, I'm really looking forward to this, because this one's stuffed a little different than the other one, huh? Yeah, so this one I did chunks of lobster tail. Let's see it, let's do it. Sun-dried tomatoes and fresh spinach. So once you're done roasting it, all you do is carve it up. So this is like surf and turf that. almost. It is a surf and turf. Let me go all get some plates for this. Here we go. Sweet potatoes. Where do you get the ideas for this here? So my kitchen is so creative. So we just did a twice baked sweet potato, some oven roasted oh. veggies, and you have the best Christmas dinner. Let me set this right Holiday here. Holiday dinner, special occasion. Look at this. That is so beautiful. Yes. So. We come out here, you're in Aurora, Missoula's, and you come in and you, you call ahead that you want to trim like this, right? Exactly. Call ahead. Yes, I always have a potato dish, a veggie dish, something in our prepared case. The beautiful, just... oh, what a terrific idea. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, and it cooks how fast? 25 minutes. 25 minutes. It Fantastic. is an easy, fast dinner. Hey, and don't forget, you guys have the wine out there? Yep. How about desserts? Always have desserts. Always beautiful stuff. Yeah, we have homemade pumpkin roll right now, which okay. is really good. Our ricotta cookie. You know what, do you notice one thing I don't have, folks? I don't have a fork because we don't want to ruin these beautiful plates so we get them out to the table and enjoy them. So we say happy holidays from Missoula's. It's great to see you, Brooke. Always tell, a pleasure. Tell Brad we said hello. I, I saw your dad, Frank. Yes, you got to see Frank. Frank, come on over here a minute. Oh, I know you don't want to, you, I know you don't. Here, I'll come to you, high five. We are just getting started with our holiday feast, so why not take a minute to enjoy a nice glass of wine. This is 750 ml. 750 ml, we're a tasting room, and we wanted to bring the finest wines that we can, as well as small plates, charcuterie, flatbreads, things that pair nicely with wine. We have array of sparkling, we've got ports, we have high-end wine plates down to Barolo, to vintage red blends from Sonoma that are you know, over 10 years old. Those are things that you're not gonna get in a typical restaurant. We have over 1,200 bottles on the walls and we have access to pretty much every single wine out there that is distributed into the United States. So that's 
beyond thousands. And I do think that every party between today and New Year's Eve needs to start with a bubble. We refer to these as Tuesday wines and Friday wines here at 750 ML. Tuesday wines are gonna be ones that don't break your budget. Because, let's be honest, if your kids are in school, they're coming home, you still need a Tuesday wine. We have a phenomenal Spanish section for that. Spanish wines are great value, they're inexpensive, and you get, I hate to say this, but the, the best bang for your buck. They're gonna go with taco night, they're gonna go with flank steak, they're gonna be your everyday wines. That's what's gonna get you through the holidays. Now, when we get into our Friday wines or your holiday wines, this is the time where you should splurge. You should be getting those rare Pinot Noirs that come from France, something epic from Oregon that is a limited release. Pinot Noir pairs with just about everything because it is such a, a light and gentle grape. Chardonnay is the most well-rounded grape. I know everyone always poo-poo Chardonnay, but Chardonnay is magnificent. Chardonnay can start in Burgundy, again France, and it can go all the way into parts of California that you know are completely different mouthfeel. And at 7.50, we always say rosé all day. That never ends here. Rosé goes with everything. Rosé can be paired with turkey, which is lovely. And then lastly, we cannot say no to Cabernet Sauvignon. We have the largest selection of that grape and that can come from anywhere. So that's what's even really cool is we have cabs from Italy. We have cabs obviously from France. We've got them from Washington, but of course we've got them from California. And that's kind of the comfort. And there is nothing more nostalgic than having a beautiful Cabernet from Napa Valley. Any bottle of wine is a beautiful choice. Even inexpensive wines are a great choice. There are inexpensive wines that range in the $12 to $17 range that are absolutely gorgeous. And then upwards of all the things that are in the high-end cabinet. There is not a bad bottle of wine. I think wine is probably the best gift that you can give anyone. After the break, David is bringing us one of his family favorites. I say pork, and that is the perfect item to be serving for a holiday feast if you're two people, four people, or you want to maybe save some money and make something that really looks elegant. So we've got this pork tenderloin here, like I said, inexpensive. We're going to wrap it in prosciutto with some cheese and some dough, and we're going to bake it up, and it's going to be beautiful. So let's start with, we've got some borsan cheese here, and I'm going to make a slit in this pork tenderloin, about an inch and a half into it, like that. It's down there. What we're going to do is we're going to stuff it with cheese. So here we go, we got the cheese, let's open it up. Now you might not get it all in there, but that's okay because you can always get some crackers, you know, have a little cheese and crackers on the side while you're waiting for this thing to cook. And then we're gonna start wrapping it in prosciutto. Prosciutto is Italian ham, let's get a little salty. Wrap it like that, let's put some more on here. It's cut really thin, so when it tears, don't worry about it, just put it on like that, it's all gonna be good. Got a little piece here. I think I heard the, the police are coming because they heard this is so good. So we'll get it all wrapped up and then we'll put it in the sear. Okay, that looks pretty good. We're going to bring that over here. Set it right here on the island for a second. Let's take it out of here. We're going to let it cool down a little bit. See that tiny piece of prosciutto try to escape? You aren't getting away from it. Not getting away. Okay, so that's gonna cool down a little bit. Close down the wolf there and get over here in the middle. And here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna bring out some pastry and we're gonna get ready, ready to wrap this thing. And then let it cool down a little bit because it's, it's hot. We need a little, little dusting here. That should be enough. We're gonna bring out the puff pastry. Just follow the directions on how to thaw it out. Okay, so we're gonna open it up going to be in three sections. We only need two sections to wrap up the pork. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one section off. We'll take this section off. We're going to use this for decorative. We're going to set that on the side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to make this big enough. So we'll 
cover this and wrap around. So this is easy to do. We put the flour down so it doesn't stick. We just start out sort of gentle. Start going like this with it. Don't need those anymore. Like this. So we'll take a few minutes. And we'll just roll this out to a size that will totally envelop the pork loin. Okay, I think we got it. We got it rolled out. We got some flour under it, so it should be in good shape to pull up. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to bring tenderloin over here, stuffed and ready to go. And I got this rowdy kitty rub. You always ask me, what was the seasoning? Well, I got this seasoning. You might have seen the lady on the show. Her and her mom are in business. And I think this stuff is really good. And it doesn't have a lot of salt in it. And that's why I like it on this, because the prosciutto is pretty salty already. So we're just putting flavor in there now. You don't have to do this. You can put your favorite rub in there, but don't over salt it because you got the prosciutto in there, right? Okay, so now we're going to wrap this up. So what we're going to do too, I got a little egg wash here. So I got an egg, a little water, and I put that together and that turns into like a glue. So that's how we're going to glue this thing together. What am I doing with this? We're going to get artsy crafty here. We're going to open up the oven, we're going to toss it in, and 30 minutes from now, we should be in pretty good shape. Okay, it's time to pull it out. 35 minutes, 400 degrees. And just remember, after you put the decorations on it, give it one more good egg painting. It's, it's in the uh, recipe, so you can see that. And then wrap it up in saran wrap, put it in the fridge for an hour, then drop it in the oven, 400 degrees, 35 minutes, and this is what you get. Check it out. And it's a good idea to let it cool a little bit, but I want to get over here so you guys can see it. So. You should let it cool a little bit before you handle it a lot. But there it is. Check it out. Pork tenderloin en croute. That's how they would say it in France. That means in crust. Get a little cheese in there. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. This is my second favorite part. You know what my favorite part is? Eating it. Happy holidays. When we come back, more side dishes to complete our holiday feast. The secret ingredient to any family feast is what you put into it. So add some life to those meals with the help of Heather's Heat and Flavor. Heather's Heat and Flavor is a store in Hudson, Ohio. And we have 400 spices, about 80 barbecue sauces, teas, loose teas, and a whole wall of hot sauces. The first store was my son's store. His name is Brian, and Brian and Heather, which is the name of the store, Heather's Heat and Flavor, opened a store in Legacy, and <laughs> three months later, it was Christmas, and they gave me enough eggnog and said, I don't know how we're gonna be able to level inventory without another store, and I went, no problem. I'll open another store. We have hot sauces. The range is from very mild, which would be a two, there's very seldom do you find a two out of 10, to a 10 out of 10, and some of the 10 out of 10s are 13s. So an extra hot in my store could very well be way out of limits. It's not like an extra hot in a grocery store. Chipotle, their habanero, their the Reaper, which is very hot. We have Mad Cow. Some names are absolutely, totally silly and people will buy it the first time because of the label. <laughs> blends, we have about 85 blends at the moment. About a third of them we make ourselves. We have rubs, we have normal things like fish herbs and an herb and garlic, a taco seasoning. By the way, the taco seasoning is really good as a dip. So you take one tablespoon of it and add it to eight ounces of sour cream and you get the best dip you've ever had. We do a fair amount of uh, dips and salsa. Terrapin Ridge Farms is a company that's up and coming and wonderful. I have yet to have a bad product from them. Salsas and dips are meant to be served with food and not necessarily with chips. A lot of people just use them for chips. Put them on your food. 
cook a pot roast with an apple salsa in a crock pot, and it's wonderful. Try to have a great selection of cookbooks. If I think I'm going to like it, I usually think somebody else is going to like it. And usually I'm pretty right on that. It takes three times around in this store to see it all. So yes, we do, that's what we strive to do, is be out here with the customer, explain what they see. If they touch something, we try to define it. That's just basic, it's from my teaching days. Sometimes say my favorite part of the store is buying all this silly stuff, but really the best part of the store I think is the blend section, where you can have five or six blends in your house and every day of the week your skinless, boneless chicken breasts are going to taste totally different. Hudson is wonderful and there's all kinds of cute shops in this little city, but Heather's Heat and Flavor, my understanding is there's no other little store like this. I mean, what is packed into the store is unbelievable. To be honest, our next dish needs no introduction. Any holiday feast has to have potatoes, right? So who do we get to help us make some of the best potatoes around and probably 50 different recipes is this guy right here. This guy. Ken Hatfield from <laughs> Hatfield's Good Grub. My friend, thank you for having us in the kitchen today. I am today. so glad you came to my kitchen. I always go to yours. I love when you're here. Well, I love when we're here yeah. because then he lets me sample everything too. I think you ate a little bit of every potato that we're fixing today. Yeah. Except for the casserole, which, which is the main thing. Which you will get to experience with me. Yeah. So you wanted to start with a hack, which I think is a great hack for us. Yeah, always at holidays, if you're trying to bake a sweet potato so you can make it into candied yams or a casserole, it's going to take forever. Mm -hmm. you know, but I, so what I do is the night before, I take a bunch of these. These are yams. They're a little larger. And that's what they look like unboiled. Uh -huh. And I stick them in boiling water for about 45 minutes. Okay. And what you're going to do is go right over the uh, okay. trash there, take your thumb and just go like that. Ooh! Ooh! Do I have to make sure I just get the and skin? And just get the skin part. Okay. okay. It'll that come that right, comes off it'll so come right off. easily. I'm going to do this one right here too so with you. Do it faster with me. See, like, look at that. If you just go like that. Oh, well, why are you so quick about it? Okay. Well, I've done a million. You have done. Here we go. I wasn't, I was, there we go. Now I got the hang of it. All right. And see, look, and then you pull off the little thing on the end. That's what I was grabbing right now. Okay. Yeah. Wow, look how easy that is. All right. All right. Do I still need my gloves? Um, actually, no. You can put them okay. right there. So what we're going to do is, actually, if you want to pull that bowl of potatoes over here. Okay. So you don't want to, for casserole, you want to have a little more chunks, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to just take that and chunk them off. Don't smash it, just okay. chunk it off. Chunk it off. After that, you'll put the brown sugar, butter, cinnamon over that. So put that back over there. Okay. And then you put it, grab the casserole dish. It should be cooled off by oh, now. Oh, it's cool. Look at this. So uh, what is that I like to say with Kenny? Uh, the magic of television. There it is. There it is. You're going to taste that. And you're gonna, yeah, of course I'm going to taste it. You're going to be angry with me because it's so terrible. It's, it's awful. Oh, I love how I grabbed the biggest bite I could possibly get here. How'd I do? That's insane because for the meal to have with dinner, I was expecting it to honestly be even sweeter. It's not really, really sweet. Yeah, I try not to it's, go too sweet because you're gonna have you that. Have the dessert after. You're gonna have that afterwards. Which mm -hmm. we, you know what? By the way, we have right here. And look <laughs> what he got, look what he does. This recipe that I did with these, if you add another uh, cup of butter to this and roll it into a, a, a dough, you can cut it up. So instead can, of the crumble here, you add another cup of butter. Add another cup of butter and. It becomes a pecan sandy cookie. During the holiday season at, at Hatfields, we're gonna have a bunch of stuff available. Um, we're gonna have uh, like Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners you can order in advance and pick them up. So if you don't wanna cook and you don't wanna do what we just did, you can do it at home. Um, but we do sweet potato casserole. This is potato salad. The best potato salad, bar done. Okay. Seriously, right there. These are garlic mashed potato, red potatoes that we just made. And uh, again, no fat, no, Mm -hmm. gluten, nothing, yeah, nothing. In there like that. It's, it's all you get all that for free, uh, uh, and you have cookies. And then with your other sweet potatoes, if you buy like a bag of them and you want to make part casserole, um, the only difference is I smashed all those potatoes up completely. I added some eggs, I added some nutmeg and some other stuff, and I, this is a an oatmeal crumble on top. So kind of like a cinnamon oatmeal cookie on top. So you tried that. You want to try a bite of this? Of course. 
Of course, it's, it's this is. I'm having my holiday feast now, which is trouble because I need to save some room in my pants for the holidays. <laughs> you know. Well, when you have this, you're gonna you're not gonna like me anymore. <laughs> it's so bad. You saved the best for last. Yeah, it's so good. That's amazing. But yeah, no one does it better than this man right here. Thank you very much. Come in Hatfield Food Group, eat some good food, or just make some of this stuff with his recipes at home, and you will become the head of the party. Just like this guy. Thanks. Happy holidays to you, sir. You as well. Our holiday feast wraps up next with, what else? Dessert. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. You know, no holiday feast is complete without dessert. And during the holidays, it is all about pies. And no one does it better than Mama Joe's. Mama Joe's is a family owned business. It's been family owned and operated since 1993. My mom and her brother, my uncle started baking pies. But it started long before then when my great aunts and grandma would make pies for different catering events and in a pizza shop and the demand became so large for the pies that we opened up a separate pie shop just to accommodate the demand of the product. The recipes, they came from a combination of my great aunts and then just tweaking them from my mom and uncle. We bake daily. And uh, we have 36 different flavors we bake daily. We always tell people if you're coming in for something very specific to either you can call ahead to make sure we have it, or we'll set it aside, or you can order it a couple days in advance. And that way you're guaranteed to get what you are looking for. All of our pies are made by hand. All of the fruit, all the pudding that goes into the pies, everything is hand scooped and weighed out. They hand scoop all the fruit in and based off of whatever flavor they're working on, they put the lid on. We have a machine that crimps the lids on to seal the pie up and then we milk and sugar wash it before it goes into the oven. Something really popular is our crumb top pies. It's a it's a sweet and streusel uh, topping, so it gives the pie a little extra crunch and sweetness to it. And those are made first during the day, and when they come out of the oven, you can kind of see them bubbling up and boiling, so they're always fun because you can kind of see the, the fillings on the inside. We do use lard in our crust, which is what gives it the extra flakiness. There's no fluff or added preservatives. Um, when you come and feel the, he the weight of our fruit pies, a lot of the time, when people originally, like when they first pick them up, they can't believe the weight in it. It's because we use real ingredients. It just gives it a nice special touch that each individual pie was handmade. I say with love. My favorite pie is our strawberry cream cheese pie. That's made in the summertime. In the fall, I like to eat our caramel apple walnut, which is our apple pie with chopped walnuts in the filling, and they drizzle caramel on the top. But I'm also a big fan of our pumpkin pie. We make pumpkin pie all year round. So we make it 365. Not everyone does that. And a day, a, a slow day, 500. We can go all the way up to eight to 10,000 a day. And that would be around the holiday times where Thanksgiving, we're making 30,000 pies in the three days leading up to Thanksgiving day. We are known for our strudels as well. And we make different types of sugar cookies, chocolate chip peanut butter. And those are just things that we make, I say, on the side. So we might not always have peanut butter cookies, and that's because our bakers were too tired at the end of the day to make the cookie dough. <laughs> For me, it's amazing every year to see the amount of customers that come in around Thanksgiving and Christmas, the amount of support that we have from the community. And it can get kind of daunting in the back, and it can get very tiresome, and you just want to go home and not pack any more pies at Thanksgiving. And then you realize that those 30,000 pies all have a home in somebody else's home. And so all of those pies, you're part of somebody else's Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, or even sometimes just birthdays. When you take a moment 
to think about that, that's when you kind of start you get a little bit humbled and you appreciate that they're choosing us, they're choosing a Mama Joe pie to be on their table for a holiday. Well, that does it for our holiday feast. We sure hope that you found some great recipes to try with your loved ones. And if you have any recipes you'd like to share, just feel free to send it our way to newday at fox8.com. And you can also find a full list of places that we visited today on our website, including our recipes. And I said, our, I actually made one today. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm David Moss. And I'm Natalie Herbeck. And we'll see you on the next New Day Cleveland. Yep. So long.